Hey guys, it is January the 9th, 2024, and it is a rainy day here in South Carolina again. Uh, we've got some pretty bad storms heading this direction. It's been raining here pretty much all morning. Um, I think it rained all night last night. Uh, looks like uh, going out towards the west that um, for all of you guys that are to the west of me, it looks like you guys got hit pretty hard last night, and um, I hope everybody's home is safe and everybody is safe right now um i've paid somewhat attention to the weather this morning i haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it i've just kind of really honestly i've just kind of looked to see what you know where the storm's headed and then what time it's going to hit us um but uh I i'm sorry if any of you guys have had any damage or uh or any hail um i i haven't looked to see if any actual tornadoes touched down or not last night um, I know that we are in a tornado watch right now um, here in South Carolina. Um, I think that's until like 10 o'clock tonight is that uh, watch. Um, I'm really hoping that we don't have any major problems here. Um, you know, I've, uh, I showed you guys my property that I have. Um, my house is surrounded with pine trees. Uh, we have some like oaks and stuff like that around here, which stand up pretty well to weather like this, but the oak trees just don't. Um, for any of you guys out there who live in an area like I do or close to where I live, um, like I said, I live right on the border of Georgia and South Carolina. I'm about three hours from the coast. I'm kind of in the center of South Carolina. Um, but uh, for any of you guys that live near where I live and you have the kind of pine trees that we have here, I'm not really sure what kind of pines they are, uh, but they're just not the strongest trees in the world. Um, they are very brittle and um, the trees tend to grow very long and lanky. They're very thin uh, and majority of the branches and all that stuff is kind of congregated at the top of the tree. Uh, so when there's really high wind, it can really make those pine trees bend way over and um, they tend to snap. Pine trees are just not the strongest wood in the world. It's actually pretty soft and it cracks really easily. Um, my biggest concern that I have right now is, uh, you know, I showed you guys my animals in the back, um, all surrounding that whole area back there right now, um, are a bunch of pine trees. And, um, here recently I've noticed that, um, you know, pine trees, uh, stay green all year long. They will start to get brown, um, a little bit on the edges of the pine needles, but they tend to stay green all year. And, um... I've noticed that since the leaf change, the, the leaves changed and they all dropped and everything, I've noticed that looking at the pine trees back there, that a whole bunch of them, uh, the pine needles were brown. So I went to did a little inspecting on them, come to find out. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of pine trees back there right now. They're just loaded with pine beetles. They've gotten into the trees and killed them. Um, if you've ever gone to uh, like a national park or something like that where they allow camping. That's the reason that they don't want you to bring your wood in uh, from your area into their uh, campgrounds is because a lot of times the wood could have those pine beetles in it and they don't want it getting into their forests uh, because they wreak havoc on everything. Um, I think they've probably killed like 20 or so pine trees back there in my backyard and um, uh, right now I just don't have the, the, the energy uh, I, I, I just can't physically do it. I can't go back there and cut them down. I don't have the money to pay anybody right now to come out here and cut these trees down. So we're kind of crossing our fingers and hoping something bad doesn't happen. Um, there's one pine tree uh, that's really big and it's a really dangerous problem. Um, those branches, uh, you know, they tend to grow out pretty long and um, they're very, very brittle. And those pine needles can really accumulate a lot of moisture on them. And, um, Especially when it when you get a lot of rain, I mean a lot of snow and a lot of like sleet and it's and it freezes on those pine needles They will actually pull those branches way down to the ground and um, It's rather frightening because you'll hear those pine uh, branches popping and um, It sounds like gunshots going off all through the woods whenever there's a really really bad um, ice storm around here and um, luckily now the house I live in here, we just don't have the pine trees so close to our house as we did the last place we lived at. Um, 
but I still run the uh, risk of one of these pine trees because they are close enough that if they did fall, they, they could land on the house. I'm not so worried about the branches falling and hitting anything around here other than my animals or breaking the fencing out there. And that fencing is not cheap. That stuff is very, very expensive. Um, we use the, uh, the highest grade steel fencing. It's made for cows. Um, we just don't want to have any problems having anything break through. Those goats tend to like bang up against the fence a lot. And we really just wanted to make sure that we got the strongest fence that we could. I'm just worried that something's going to fall and crush the fence um, and let the animals out um, and or fall on top of one of the animals. So I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that something like that bad doesn't happen. Um, but it looks like the storm is coming right now. Uh, basically, if this is South Carolina, the storm's kind of coming up like this. And as it's coming up, it's kind of slowly coming over to the east of South Carolina towards the coast. So it looks like in about two hours or so, we're going to get hit pretty hard here with some really heavy winds and some really heavy rain and thunderstorms. Um, I already went through and unplugged all of my stuff throughout the house. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. I'm really hoping that it doesn't get too bad out here. Um, uh, I, this is like the third or fourth take I've taken doing this video already. Uh, and um, I was talking about in the last take that I did, I stopped it and restarted over that uh, um, the last house that we lived in, we did have that problem because uh, a lot of ice had accumulated. We had a really bad storm about 10 years ago. If you guys remember that storm, K-Pax. Um, and uh, the reason I was telling the story, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell it again now, is because uh, my son was born during, during that storm, my, my youngest one. Uh, that storm K-Pax came through the south and just wrecked everything down here. Um, we didn't have power for like two weeks where I lived. Um, the restaurant that I worked at didn't have power for two weeks. Uh, we ended up having to throw everything away that was in the refrigerators and the freezers because it just thawed out and went bad. Um, cost us thousands and thousands of dollars with the waste that we had to get rid of because uh, it all just thawed out. And, um, and, and, and a lot of it seemed like it might have been okay, but I wasn't willing to risk getting somebody sick. Uh, so we threw away thousands of dollars of stuff. But anyway, uh, my, um, my, my wife was pregnant uh, during that storm. She was right at the end of her pregnancy. Uh, we were, she was supposed to be admitted on that, that Friday. And um, I remember that night I had cooked spaghetti. I had one of those camp stoves. I had cooked spaghetti on a camp stove. I had some neighbors over. We all had spaghetti together. And... Um, that night, we all got into the bed. We didn't have power, and I didn't have a fireplace or anything, so I had really no way to heat my house. And um, uh, my whole family got into our bed. We had a big king-size bed. We all laid down in the king-size bed together to keep each other warm. And um, like 12 o'clock in the night, my wife woke me up and said my water just broke. Um, she was supposed to go in uh, to, have, to be induced the next day, but they had called and said, hey, we're too short-staffed because of the, the ice storm. We're going to have to, like, put you out a week. And my wife was so upset. She cried all night. And she just wanted to have the baby. And my wife was just huge with him. The biggest she had been out of any of the kids. And um, she was just about to pop. And she was just done with it. She wanted to just go ahead and have them. And um, they had said, sorry, you know, you're going to have to wait. And uh, at about 12 o'clock that night, she woke me up and said, my water's broke. And my father-in-law had a four-wheel drive truck. He came over and picked her up to the hospital. And um, I had an all-wheel drive car, but I had to get up and get the kids together so that we could go to the hospital. I couldn't just leave them in the house. And um, anyway, to make a long story short, she, she left the house about 15 minutes later. I get a text message of a picture of a baby, and I thought it was my oldest son. It, it looked just like him, but ended up being my youngest. She, like... Like, just like a movie, they open the hospital doors up, they get her the gurney, they roll her in, and next thing you know, they get in the room, and the baby just pop right out. And um, she wasn't on any epidural or anything like that. With the other two children, she was, but with this one, he just came out within, like, five minutes of being at the hospital. So, uh, they wanted us to name him K-Pax, and we were like, no, we're not going to do that. My, my, my youngest son is actually named um, after my grandfather and uh, my great-great-grandfather, and um, uh, so he's the third. I, we didn't know that you could actually uh, skip generations on that, but um, we, we were able to, so uh, he's the third generation. Um, 
Anyway, um, I just wanted to talk today about um, about what I was speaking on yesterday uh, because I just think that it's really important. And after doing a lot of thought into this and um, you know just really thinking it over and mulling around in my head, um, you know, like I said, I really want to try to get down to the bottom of this and try to figure out. Uh, you know, what's the root cause for alcoholism and addiction? And, um, you know, like I said in, in the other video, that, you know, 50% of, of all alcoholics suffer from some sort of depression or anxiety. And um, that's, that's huge. And um, I looked at the numbers. There's 30 million people in the United States right now that suffer from ADD or alcohol use disorder. Uh, so... If 50% of those people suffer from anxiety or depression, I mean, that's 15 million people in the U.S. that are suffering from anxiety or depression and trying to self-medicate with alcohol and or drugs. And I just think that's alarming. And, um, you know, the thing, too, I just saw this the other day watching a video that, that we, that the United States, we use more drugs than any other country in the entire world. Um, and it's like hand over fist, like how much we use in our country. Um, the amount of opioids that are used in our country, uh, benzodiazepines that are used in this country, things like Xanax and stuff like that. I mean, we, I don't, I don't have the numbers right off the top of my head right now, um, but it's, it's staggering the amount of people that are prescribed those drugs every single year. Um, and what's up happening is they get on them. Um, I've actually got some really close friends of mine, um, who have been taking those types of drugs for anxiety. Uh, they got tired of taking them, and then they tried to stop, and then, like, had serious problems after they tried to quit. Um, I know people, like, I don't know if you all, any of you all know who Jordan Peterson is. He's a pretty controversial, controversial professor from Canada. Uh, he's been on the Joe Rogan podcast a whole lot, and he's got a bunch of books he's written. Um, very, very smart individual. Um, I'm not going to get into the reasons why he's controversial or anything like that, but... Um, Anyway, he, uh, he had a very serious problem with benzodiazepines. He tried to get off of them and almost lost his life because of it. And he's still suffering um, from his uh, stopping using those. He's still having problems from it. Um, I know that he switched over to like a carnivore diet and did a bunch of things for himself, and it seemed to help him improve. But he still is having problems like two years after stopping using those substances. And um, that's, it's just, a lot of people are affected by it every single day. Um, so back to the, the reason for this video today is that um, just looking at the numbers and looking at all this stuff, I just feel like this is a really important topic to discuss um, because I think it is one of the root causes of, um, of abusing alcohol and abusing drugs because I feel like a majority of us are self-medicating um, using alcohol and or drugs. Um, I know I did for myself. Um, I suffered from depression and anxiety for many, many years. And uh, I tried to self-medicate using alcohol. And um, all that did for me was almost caused me to lose my life at the end of it all. Uh, you know, like I've said, there's other, uh, there's other methods. There's other drugs that they can prescribe for you. I'm not a fan of taking them. I've tried them in the past. Um, but they might work for you. Uh, you know, speaking to a therapist, um, there's just a bunch of options out there. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I, I want to talk about today is that, uh, you know, the point that I was making yesterday is that men in general and, 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 and just everybody, but I know men too, and I'm not trying to, make, trying to break down any genders or anything like that. I'm just saying that we just don't talk about our emotions enough. And, um, and our feelings. And um, I know that played a huge role in my alcohol consumption. Um, you know, I spent so many years trying, like I said, to make everybody happy. Uh, I never was worried about myself um, because I was too busy just trying to, to make everybody happy, to make everything fair for everyone. And um, anytime I would encounter a problem, I would just brush it over and um and just let it roll off my back and i never addressed anything and um anytime that somebody would say something to me out of the way or 
uh, something I just didn't like, or they would you know, say something really disrespectful for it to me, um, I would never approach it. And, um, you know, the thing is, is that, I, like I said, I, I was so focused on trying to please everyone, make everybody else happy, that I wasn't, wasn't taking the time to focus on myself. And um, I think that's really important. I think we need to do more of uh, uh, sharing how we feel, talking about our emotions, talking about our feelings, and getting those off our chest. Um, I know from my personal experience from the past couple of years, um, I've done a much better job of when I have a problem, I talk about it. Um, if something is uh, upsetting me now, I will speak about it. Um, if I don't like something or something that someone says or something somebody does, I'll just say it. And uh, I don't ever, ever um, get confrontational with anybody the way I say things. Um, you know, I'm very, uh, very, very laid back and relaxed about the way I handle it. Um, you know, I speak in the tone I'm speaking right now. I never let my voice get, you know, I don't raise my voice. I don't scream. Um, and I can't say that's all the time because I'd be a liar if I said that because th there are times that I have gotten upset, but for the majority, I don't. Um, and I've just found that when I speak about my problems and I go ahead and get on my chest, I feel so much better after it's all said and done. Um, you know, just being able to, to, just for myself, to be able to talk about it. And once it's out in the open, then it's over with. And, um, you know, the thing is, if you speak to somebody, let's say somebody's doing something that's just really bothering you. They keep saying something that just, that you don't like. Uh, let's say they're making a comment about your spouse and they continually do it. Let's say it's your brother or your sister and they just don't like your spouse. That happens all the time. So let's say your brother or sister doesn't like your spouse. They're continually saying things about them. Well, I don't like this about them and this and that. And you never say anything. You keep brushing on the rug. And then one day you finally explode and um, you say a lot of things out of anger that you probably wouldn't have said um, later on if you had just taken the time to stop. And go into the conversation and not let, let your, uh, your anger take you over, but just stop and say, hey, I don't like what you're saying. Um, would you please not do that anymore? And these are the reasons why. And um, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't say that any longer. And hey, look, if they continue to do it, then um, you know, maybe you might need to remove yourself from that person. But in the end of it all, you're gonna feel so much better about yourself you're going to feel so much better about the situation that you went ahead and got off your chest. And you've gone ahead and drawn your line in the sand and it's there. And um, like I said, if, if you've drawn your line in the sand and continue to cross over that line, well, your answer is there for you. And it's just not that, that difficult to figure that one out. Um, like I said, I kept all my emotions um, bottled up. I kept them against my chest. I never discussed them. <clears throat> I would let all my problem, problems pile up, and then I would take them out on my wife. And I did that a lot. Um, I, would, I would let all these things at work happen. Uh, my boss would ask me to do something that, you know. I, I, I was always that guy that was an overachiever. Uh, I never said no, ever. Never one time did I ever say no to anything. If they, I was asked to do something, I always said yes. And I always thought that was the best policy. I wanted to be the best employee I could. And I just wanted to be a team player. And I wanted to emulate that for my staff. Um, but there were a lot of things that were asked of me that I just thought, man, this, this, you're just asking way too much out of me. But I never said no. And then I would come home and let's say my wife said something to me. It just, I didn't, I didn't like that she said. I would end up exploding on her, taking all, all my frustrations out on her. And then she would get the blunt of everything, and then I didn't really address the problem where it lied. I didn't talk to the people that were actually causing me the issue, and instead, I took all my anger out on her, which was not okay, and it wasn't right, and, um, you know, that caused me problems, and, um, you know, I would feel bad about that, uh, and, I, and I, I'm not saying that just because I'm in a cam right now. I really did feel bad later on after I'd gotten mad and exploded. And uh, you know, said a bunch of things I just should not have said. Um, 
I should have taken all my problems and discussed them with everybody, and I, 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 I just never did that. Um, I would let people trample all over me, and I would never say anything. I, I, I constantly felt used. Um, and that went for, you know, I had staff members, you know, my managers would ask for time off and, or whatever, and even though it would be ridiculous, the stuff that I would get asked for sometimes, um, I would always say yes, and even though it put me out, I would go ahead and do it. Instead of saying no, I never said no to anybody. I mean, it was so rare for me to ever say no. Um, when I should have, I should have been like, no, it's just, I can't let you have that time off. This is a really busy time of the year. Instead, I would say, okay, sure. And um, it would end up affecting me uh, really negatively in the end because I would end up really overworking myself, stressing myself out so bad. I'll never forget this one time I had one of my managers come up to me. She had called off. Uh, she, had, she was sick. And um, she called off work. And um, I think it was like two days later, she comes into work and brought her daughter's excuse and handed it to me. And uh, she had the audacity to ask me, um, I'm gonna need two more days off, and I said, well, I don't, what are you talking about? And she said, well, my two days off, I was sick. So basically she was, let's say it was a Monday and Tuesday, well, she called off the Wednesday and Thursday, but she was off Monday and Tuesday, so she was sick four days in a row, so for the first two days were her days off, and then the next two days she was supposed to work, but she called off. She wanted me to give her two more days off because she was sick during her days off. I just looked at her like, uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. <laughs> that was one time I did say no. Um, uh, so many times, um, I would have a, uh, oh, I would have, I, I, I could have had a quick discussion that could have prevented a lot of problems. I'm sorry, my handwriting is just horrible. Uh, a lot of people say I write like a doctor, and I, sometimes I can't even read my own handwriting. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, like I talked about the other day, um, you know, make a list of, uh, things that trigger you, um, and, uh, and make a list of things that, 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 that not only trigger you, but things that, you know, that, that you don't like, um, you know, if you're constantly having problems, either be at work or at home or whatever it is, make a list of all those things. And then you can start slowly but surely start to whittle down on each one of them. I'm not saying that you need to tackle all your problems all at once. Um, but you could slowly but surely, you know, like one thing at a time. Um, let's say, for instance, uh, your spouse continually leaves their sink with toothpaste in it. And, you, and you know, it just gets on your nerves. And you're the one that cleans the house. And you, you said multiple times, hey, would you mind just washing that out? And it doesn't ever happen. Um, you know, it could be one of those things you just work on it. And uh, you could say, hey, I really would appreciate it if you would just wash that out for me. Or whatever it could be. And, um, you know, just slowly work on those things. Instead of letting it all pile up and then all of a sudden you get this big explosion because you're so angry. Um, start talking to yourself in the mirror and start practicing um, on yourself how that you want to address people. Um, I'm not saying go into every single problem that you have and go in there and start screaming and yelling. Um, I, I'm really saying go into your problems and um, you know go in there with a calm head and, and, and speak calmly and uh, you know just don't go in there angry. Um, and it's a really good practice to get in front of your mirror and uh, practice talking to yourself like you would be talking to somebody else. Do that a couple times. Write it down. I used to do that all the time. Whenever I had a really big problem, because I'm not going to lie, I would get really frightened to have to go to my boss and have to talk to him. I just didn't like it. Um, especially if I had something really big I had to talk to him about. Like when I would leave my job or whatever. Like my last job, I gave three months notice and stayed three months through and helped them out so they could find another chef to replace me. Um, I helped interview the chef. I actually helped train the chef that was coming in to replace me. Um, I did everything in my power to make sure that was the smoothest transition that they could have. And um, I remember the day that I went in there and told them that I was leaving. I was so scared to do it. Um, and uh, I had to get in front of my mirror and I wrote it down and I practiced over and over and over again until I was really comfortable with what I was going to tell him. And um, 
I know that sounds ridiculous, but uh, I was I was I was frightened, and and what's crazy about it is the guy's like ten years younger than me. Um, I mean, he probably the last boss I had uh, at my other establishment was like, like I said, ten years younger than I was. Uh, he graduated from college, maybe had maybe five or six years under his belt in the industry before he had started working there. Um, that was his first job as a general manager, and I was afraid to go talk to him. And uh, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. But um, I, I did. I got up in the mirror and practiced and practiced and practiced until I got comfortable with what I was going to say. And then I went and talked to him about it, and everything went okay. Um, but I didn't go in there nervous, not knowing how I was going to approach the situation. I made sure I tweaked it when I was doing uh, a practice session in the mirror, how I wanted to say what I was going to say. I did it in front of my wife. Uh, you know, she told me some things that I needed to change and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, it takes some time to, to, to practice how you're going to approach certain people anytime you have a problem. And, um, and like I said, let's not let this stuff just get so bottled up that, you know, we're letting it affect us in a way that it might push us to want to drink um, to, or consume drugs um, because we're not able to get stuff off of our chest. Um, uh, taking the time um, to think about how you want to react and not just overreacting. I just talked about that. Um, not causing issues, issues is so much better. And you can be so much more clear uh, when you've taken the time to actually sit down and like, you know, write it all down and practice it. Um, but anyway, uh, like I said, I just wanted to make another video today and just kind of talk about, um, you know, everybody taking the time to really focus on uh, your emotional state, uh, you know, how, how you interact with other people, and, um, you know, talking about your problems. And this is, you know, a lot of that stuff I kind of like integrated into my old job and stuff like that, but... You know, this goes for anything in your life. Um, and, you know, and the thing is, too, it's not just, like, problems that you might have. You know, just talk to somebody about how you're feeling in general. You know, if you're feeling sad, talk to somebody. Um, if you're feeling, you know, down and, and depressed, you know, take the time to, to just to talk with somebody about it. And if you don't have anybody to talk to about it, um, I get that, too. And um, if, if there's just nobody out there for you to talk to, you can get on my Instagram, on my Facebook. I'm not going to turn anybody away. You can message me anytime you need to, and I'm here if you need somebody to talk to. If you just need, excuse me, if you just need somebody to vent to, I'm always here. And um, I'm more than happy to talk to you. So I don't want you to feel like you don't have anybody to speak to at all. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk to any of you that are having any kinds of problems and you need to speak to somebody. Um, I totally get it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of friends. Um, I, you know, with all the years of my alcohol consumption and all the rotten things that I did to people and how I used to act, I, I drove a lot of my friends away. And, um, you know, and a lot of my friends, too, still are in that lifestyle. And I just don't associate with them anymore because they're doing something totally different than what I'm doing now. And, um, uh, you know, I just don't really speak to those people anymore. So I, I myself don't have a heck of a lot of people to talk to every single day. I do have some really good friends of mine that I talk to on a regular basis. And I have family that I talk to. Um, but like I said, I don't want you guys to feel like there's nobody out there in the world to speak to. If you really need somebody to speak to, please contact me. And I'll be more than happy to talk with you about it. But um, anyway, guys, um, I think that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Uh, it sounds like that wind's ramping up pretty bad out there, and it's raining really, really bad. Um, I'm going to try to go ahead and get this video uploaded uh, before the storm gets really horrible over this way because it's really going to mess with the Internet. Like I said, I use a um, one of those uh, 5G towers as my internet connection and um, anytime there's really bad storm or anything like that it just really interferes with the internet so I wanted to get this video uh, a bit recorded early today and get it posted early before I did have any problems with my internet and um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, I did ramble on a little bit, but uh, like I said, I just think it's important for us to talk about our feelings, our emotions, getting stuff off of our chest, and not stewing in it. Um, I just think it's just, that's the best policy, is uh, being able to discuss those issues. And, um, and, I, and I really feel like if, if, that if we started practicing that um, as a whole, all of us, um, I just think it'd just be a better thing for everyone. Um, and not even just people that have a problem with alcohol or addiction, you know, just everybody in general. Uh, I think a lot of us, even people that are not addicts or alcoholics, tend to do the same thing as well. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to stop rambling on here and go ahead and get off. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. I just looked at the numbers this morning. We're at 1,700 subscribers. Um, this channel is growing um, at an exponentially fast rate. I mean, it's just it's it's, it's just growing really really quick, and um, I'm still uh, trying my best to keep up with every single one of the comments. Um, I think I replied to everybody at this point. Now I'm going to continue to try to reply to all of you. Um, when the channel gets to the point where it's just too much for me to keep up with, I'll let you guys know. Um, and and and. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna apologize for not being able to get to each and every single one of you. Uh, like I said before, if you take the time to to comment on my channel, I want to be polite and respond back. There's a lot of really good questions in there that I want to respond to, um, and I don't want to leave anybody out. So, when it gets to that point, I'll let you guys know. As of right now, I'm still okay and um, still good doing the videos every single day. Um, Still having some stomach issues, but that's to be expected, and that's going to go on for the next couple of weeks. Uh, it'll eventually start getting better, and the next thing you know, I'm going to have another procedure on my pancreas. I got another one coming up beginning of March. I have not scheduled that one yet, and I need to actually go ahead and do that so I can get a, a morning appointment. That's why I was saying that you need to go ahead and get your appointment scheduled early. That way you can get in and lock in that morning appointment. Um, so I need to go ahead and jump on that probably today and get that scheduled. So I'll let you guys know when that next one's going to be. But with that said, guys, have a great day. And everybody stay safe out there with the storms coming in. Um, I really hope that nobody has any damage or anything in their homes or anybody gets injured. I really do. And um, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for all the support. And uh, until tomorrow's video, guys, goodbye.